consider a sector of this circle and these two are the radii and they subtend an angle of theta now and this is the arc length of course now as this angle keeps on getting smaller and smaller like this uh, I think this is fine so you can see that the arc length almost becomes vertical and uh, if I put in some arbitrary values for instance for very small angles of theta let's say this is 1 and let's say this is this one 100 and then if we apply um, a trigonometric function as in sine theta is equal opposite by hypotenuse as in 100 the value is 0 0.01 now uh, in your calculator if you actually find out the value of theta so sine inverse 0 0.01 making sure that the mode on your calculator is in radian you'll see uh, sine inverse 0 0.01 is also equal to 0 0.01 so the value of theta is 0 0.01 radian approximately of course so from here on what we can conclude is for very small angles sine theta is approximately equal to theta and this is the concept behind small angle approximation and using this concept we are going to derive the equation for centripetal acceleration that is v squared by r now let's consider an object traveling in circular motion from point a to point b at a the tangential velocity is va and at b the tangential velocity is vb and this is especially for your a2 but in your as if you remember vector diagrams what you can do is using vectors you can construct a vector diagram so va is towards right but if i put va in this way this will be minus va and you should also remember that uh, to construct a vector diagram vectors have to be arranged tip to tail so if i put vb in this direction so the tip of vb is aligned with the tail of va and guess what this will be the change in velocity del b also an important thing to note would be uh, even though the velocities are different if it's moving with a uh, constant speed the magnitude of these velocities va and vb will be equal so if you are just concerned with the value va is equal to vb just the values of course now um, just as we had seen in the previous section that for very small angles so if the object traveled a very small distance it would obtain a uh, subtend a very small angle between v and v like this so for small angles if we apply trigonometric function sine theta over here sine theta is equal to opposite del v by v by hypotenuse that is v and exactly what we had seen in the previous section the sine theta is going to be approximately equal to theta now if this is theta you need to recall the equation for angular velocity so angular velocity is omega equals theta by time therefore theta will be equal to omega times time omega is the angular velocity of course so let's just focus on this part so what we'll have here is del v change in velocity 
by V equals uh, omega t because theta equals to omega t. And do you remember the equation that links angular velocity with tangential velocity? That is, since V equals R omega, therefore, omega should be equal to V by R. So instead of writing omega t, we can write del V by V equals, instead of omega, we just substitute it with V by R into t. Now, you just bring t to the other side. That makes del V by V equals V to the right. V times V by R. V times V gives you V square by R. And guess what? Sorry, this will be del V by T. If you bring T to the left, del V by T. Del V by T is the rate of change of velocity. And what is this rate of change of velocity? Rate of change of velocity is basically acceleration. So now you have the equation for centripetal acceleration using the small angle approximation method. Hope this helps.